Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. Over the next four months, until the November 2nd election, City Talk will be part of CUNY TV's presidential election talk, looking at national and international politics, Iraq, the conventions, Bush, Kerry, Edwards, Cheney, the strategies, the messages. Today, during this Independence Week, we open the series with a broad reconnoitering of the political terrain in New York as well as the nation with two peerless political practitioners, pundits, and prognosticators. My guests are Mike McEwen, a partner in the consulting firm of Mercury Public Affairs. Mike formerly served as Governor Pataki's press secretary and director of communications. He provides a quote-unquote Republican perspective. Also joining us is Jeff Plout, a partner in the Global Strategies Group, another well-known, highly regarded political consulting firm, whose and clients have included, among others, John Edwards. Jeff gives us a democratic slant, and I will be as biased as I want to be. Right. Mike, your reaction to Kerry was a bit of a, I mean, to Edwards was, was a bit of a stifled yawn. Explain. Uh, I mean, I was like, such on the edge of my seat waiting for the choice. I was so, uh, oh, anticipation yeah, right. was so right. tingled. I mean, it was the most conventional wisdom choice. It's the safest choice. It's a ho-hum choice. I mean, it tells you that John Kerry is, is an indecisive guy uh, who, 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 can't, who doesn't want to make a decision uh, in any timely way. Why did he wait so long? I mean, he, he could have been helping with fundraising. He could have been helping with the campaign if he had a, uh, if he had a candidate. They had all the primaries so early so they could have a presidential candidate who could begin the campaign early. The guy's gone to sleep, and, and now he picks, picks a... Uh, okay, now wait a, a second. Vice. Before I... <laughs> before well, we, be a sleeper. <laughs> Excuse me. The guy's no. got like, what did he get, like 5,000 votes out of Iowa and that made him a superstar? Wait a second. Wise guy, you are advising Kerry. Who do you pick? Come on. Well, I mean, I, I, it's I, easy think, to I, I think I, I think John McCain would have been a good choice. Oh, <laughs> God. right. Let's get. We'll talk to about McCain later. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not sure where Edwards helps you. I mean, I, I might have gone with somebody like a Bob Graham out of Florida to try to swing a state okay. like that. Okay. Be practical. An electoral college, college yeah, uh, choice. I don't, I'm not sure well, what Kerry yeah, does yeah, with Edwards. Uh, Doug, not only was it a good choice, it was a, a great choice. John Edwards is a won a United States Senate seat from North Carolina against an entrenched Republican who he took out. He's the um, uh, son of a mill worker. He had tremendous, generates tremendous enthusiasm and excitement. He's going to help uh, across the Midwest and the Rust Belt states, which are seeing kind of the industry fading and kind of their uh, uh, need to have an aspirational, positive, forward-looking candidate. And he was the author of, of uh, important health care legislation and um, uh, so I think it's going to be a fantastic choice and um, public polling prior to the choice said that, said that he kind of was excitement because Kerry Bush is very close to begin with. Ultimately a presidential campaign is about the choice, it was about the president, the right. person who's going to lead right. the country. That has always been the case and will be the case in this election. Ultimately it's going to be a choice on, on Kerry uh, and Bush, but where a vice president choice can help is kind of uh, on the margins to say something about a candidacy to, to portray a team and the energy, enthusiasm, intelligence of a Kerry Edwards ticket, I think kind of matches up very, very nicely against the um, Bush Cheney ticket and the public polling shows that. Okay, the, my last comment on this. What, what it, an electoral cal college calculation, what is, what does Edwards bring to the table, Mike? I, I don't think he brings a whole lot. I mean, he, he, he finished a, 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 he ran really poorly in in, the, in part, a lot of the places that, uh, that you expect him to be bring help. And then when he and listen, John John Kerry 
treated is already treating John Edwards poorly. He he made him he hung him out there at the drive for all these months while he flirted with John McCain. While he, we, all the speculation was about John McCain, how great John McCain would have been. I mean, that's just not a really uh, a big warm embrace for 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 John Edwards. That, you know, Jeff, they, 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 but, but let's follow on this McCain thing. Doesn't the McCain wooing by Kerry, even though subtle and not formally acknowledged, really come back to hurt Kerry that? This guy is his second choice, Edwards. No, not at all. I think it's a kind of a it's a reflection on the an incumbent president with all the powers of an incumbent presidency that that on many of the things that that Senator McCain cares deeply about camp campaign finance reform, changing the current system and stuff. This president is out to lunch. This is the most opaque administration in history, and that's from that is from John Dean, counsel to Richard Nixon, not from Jeff Plout. <clears throat> okay, let's move on. Mike, the political terrain. This is not going to be a 50-state election. This looks like a 17 <clears throat> or 18-state election, and we we look like we live in a state or states that aren't going to have an election. Talk about the the electoral terrain out there. What should we be looking for over the next couple of months? Well, I mean, I think to the extent that we see anything of this race in New York, it's going to be because if New Jersey remains in play, if, if Bush stays close in New Jersey in the last is that, polls. Is that likely? In the last polls, he was six points off, um, which was reasonably close in, in a state that should be a Democratic right. state. So the, to the extent that we see anything, it'll be because of, of, of Jersey, uh, not because of New York. And New York is not a state that... Yeah, Ed Koch has. said New York was in play. It was just blowing smoke, right? I, I think it's pretty much a, a, a done deal at this point. It's, it's, it's now, does Kerry, does Kerry and, and Edwards campaign in New York, but since it's there in their column, does it behoove them to ignore us as well? Well, the other side, the other reason why we'll see these candidates is because of the money. money. Right. I mean, this is where I, what's what they come to New York for. And so we'll see them to some extent. And the national media is here as well. So the, to some extent, you get a platform when you come here. You know, uh, uh, raising campaign money is the kind of mother's milk of politics, which brings, uh, you know, both parties and, and all candidates uh, here into New York. Uh, New Yorkers are likely to see television advertising this campaign season if they're vacationing in, uh, in the uh, Poconos or, or going out to Lancaster County. The, uh, Pennsylvania is going to be contested. Yeah. Uh, which will be a, a hotly contested state, an important state. Uh, New York is important. It's not competitive right now. And, and much of the country, this isn't only on the presidential level, there's fewer fewer competitive congressional elections right now. This cycle, the state of California has 48 congressional races, unlikely to have any really closely contested ones. So we have a kind None? of a, we have a, kind of a, a, a country which is kind of balkanized by region uh, largely, which I think is one of the tremendous advantages of Senator Edwards is that he will... Uh, help the Democratic presidential ticket campaign throughout the South. Um, and, you know, Clinton won some states in the South, and so I think there's kind of the ability to campaign all over the country, um, I think, becomes the kind of key dynamic. Does Edwards even give Kerry a shot at the South? Well, I mean, let me just say, I think it's interesting that they, they kicked this off in, in Pittsburgh, which I think talks about the importance right, of but, Pennsylvania. Right. But I mean, no, I, I, I don't see John, see John Edwards doing much in, in the South. I doubt he's going to be able to carry even his own state of North Carolina. Um, I, I see that the, the South stays solidly in, in George Bush's uh, uh, column. Florida, again, is, I think this doesn't do much to help uh, Bush in Florida, and I think Florida moves uh, closer to George Bush. Okay. Bush's message. <clears throat> when we look back at this campaign from the December of 2004. <clears throat> What's going to be the message for Bush? What's going to be Kerry's message? And why does one message trump the other? Well, I don't think Kerry has a message at this point. I mean, this guy has run a Rose Garden strategy, and he's, and he's the challenger. We have, he's gone to sleep, and we haven't seen much of him. But, I mean, George Bush is, I mean, again, he's in the office. It, it, events are going to have a lot to do with, with what happens to George Bush. Um, but the economy, the state of the economy, and the state of the war. Uh, to the extent that the people feel good about the economy and, and feel that he's handling the war, I think he'll be fine. Jeff? Well, I think if you, if you, if you say who's going to do a better job improving health care, um, um, the answer is John Kerry. Who's a better job of improving schools is John Kerry. Who's a better job of managing the economy, creating jobs, creating kind of a future-oriented growth economy? The answer is John Kerry. Is that a message, though, or is that just sort of a laundry list of statements? Is there, well, is well, there well, a coherent Presidential message? campaigns are about, are about two things, mm -hmm. different than other campaigns, ultimately. They're about the, the uh, uh, 
the, the, the domestic economy, which, which voters rightly believe the president at least has something to say and, and do something about on that uh, the president is a big failure and about America's place in the world. Right now, America's place in the world is a big question mark because the world is a big question mark, but I think, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how uh, George Bush continues to do. I personally believe um, uh, he's been a, a kind of a failure and eroded our position with natural allies and, and NATO and others who are important. I think voters are still kind of on the fence on that. It's an important national security is an important kind of threshold mm -hmm. issue, and we'll see where it goes. But to the extent that you move to any of the domestic concerns that voters have, then, then uh, Democrats are viewed to be stronger. And voters are currently kind of split on all this, because we know, because we ask them in other public polling, or they're kind of asked uh, uh, every two days what they think. And um, um, if you had a, um, uh, a question, and you said, who's going to be the uh, mayor of Oz, the Democrat or the Republican in America right now would probably be split 50-50. We have a very deeply, evenly <coughs> split country. Okay. But to the extent that national security is the issue, I mean, traditionally, when national security is the issue, Republicans win. Mm -hmm. People trust Republicans more to handle the issue of national security. And, and you know, I, I think when people reflect on where, the, where we were in the world, the, the way we did things, that led to we got bombed on our own on our own in our own city here i mean i think national security issues are going to be very strong and you're going to want a president who takes it you know who's, who's, who is decisive who who will you know take the war on terrorism to the other streets not into brooklyn right uh, but mike I, when you said that it just brought to mind that George Bush was the president on 9-11 and Condoleezza Rice in her testimony before the 9-11 Commission said they were all at battle stations. Well, Donald Rumsfeld on September 11th almost got killed by a hijacked plane at battle stations. So I think there's potentially some weakness here about the Bush stewardship, both um, before the guy was and a, after. I think the guy was in, in office for eight months, nine months. I don't think there's, there's going to be a lot of, uh, of that. I mean, when you look back at, at, at the Clinton record of, uh, since, the, since the 93 bombing mm -hmm. at the World Trade Center and, and going forward, they didn't do a whole lot. So it's not going to be 9-11. <clears throat> it's going to be Iraq in uh, terms well, of I, I think international it's gonna be the, well, politics. To the extent that John Kerry can make it about Iraq, um, uh, but I, don't have, I haven't heard him say a word. I don't know what his thoughts are on, on this topic. I mean, we know he voted for the war, uh, but now he doesn't like it. I mean, he, I don't know. Maybe he's changed his mind again since the transition to power mm -hmm. in Iraq. I mean, but again, largely I think it's going to be events that have a, that probably the president doesn't have a lot to do with. And, that, and that, events that have not yet occurred. Exactly. So this election is going to be determined in some way by events that have not yet been, that have not occurred. Uh, that, that's very possible. That's, that's traditionally, traditionally events play a major role. Okay, let's talk about conventions. We've got the upcoming Democratic convention in, what, three weeks. Right. But Tom Menino, the, the mayor of Boston, is attacking the presidential candidate. He called the campaign small-minded and incompetent. Is this the Democrats, their usual nah. circular firing squad well, approach he, to elections? Yeah, you know, Doug, there's a, there's, a, there's a rich history, and in New York, Mayor Bloomberg sat out the big fundraising lunch, which he had uh, uh, you know, pulled together for leading Republicans coming into town. And urban, area, urban areas occupy a special place in the American psyche and landscape, and that is being particularly kind of... Uh, dependent, interested in, and kind of federal resources and dollars. So the major cities in America, New York, Boston, Los Angeles, Chicago, have personalities and leaders which are fully formed and not dependent on kind of, you know, broader national identity. So there's a point of pride of New Yorkers, of Bostonites, of Chicagoans and stuff that they're from their city. So the mayor as the kind of the cheerleader obviously sees an opportunity to kind of trumpet that. Ultimately, the, the conventions are not regional events anymore. They're national television events with diminished ratings, actually, because much of the drama of our conventions of a century ago no longer exists. Yeah, but Jeff, yeah, this, this, this can't be good that the mayor, Democratic mayor of Boston is involved in a, you know, Doug, match Doug, with if, if the... one half of one percent of Americans had any idea who, Ta, who Menino is... Okay, so they don't know the controversy, so well, it doesn't No, matter. nor is it ultimately going to be one which is kind of going to be referential to their vote okay. or their vote choice okay. or their choice of carry. It's kind of, there's a distraction, there's going to be, there's kind of a sideshow to all this to the extent that it's, that it runs to some central element of the candidacy, then it has a chance of getting in, but, but a kind of a labor dispute in Boston and the mayor's feelings on it 
are not particularly important, especially since John Kerry's position is, as a kind of a point of principle, I don't cross picket lines. That's pretty under, to the extent that anyone's paying attention to this, which I don't think they are, that's a very understandable position. How do you make him pay for that? How do you make Kerry pay for... Well, listen, I mean, if, if we're talking about a police union, right? It's, these are police officers. It's not like the sanitation workers, as much as I respect sanitation workers. This is about the, this is about police work, police officers. And if they're still picketing at the convention, if there's still an issue at the convention, with the, with the lack of drama that goes on at the convention, the media, the, the media is going to be focusing on, on all this. And it's oh. going to, and they'll, the, the union guy will be on Nightline and they'll be on all the shows and it'll be a major distraction. Um, and again, it, when a police officer involved, and then Kerry's got to cross the picket line, then Edwards has got to make a decision about crossing the picket line. I mean, it all becomes... And Doug, the Republicans will have to <clears throat> have a decision on whether they cross their picket line, which will be a bunch of homeless people who have been kind of shipped out to Queens for the day and will kind of show up on the evening news because they've been kind of redistributed around elements of the city. I mean, the convention, there's a, there's a there are events that happen in the hall and the events that happen outside. Absent like a Chicago 1968 police officers, protesters, beatings, profanity, um, uh, but the, most conventions, the story, there's stories at every convention that are outside the hall. Mm -hmm. Very few of them do, do you remember what happened outside of the hall. Some of them you don't even remember <coughs> what happened inside the hall. This one, I think, is the, the story is likely to be people care about this election. There are indications that younger people are more engaged than they have before. I suspect that the stories coming out of the conventions will be kind of campaign stories about where the respective kind of Democrats and Republicans okay, are. Okay, now, we've said that the conventions have been reduced in terms of their actual influence and importance as, you know, we don't cover it as much, etc. However, this convention seems to me, the Democratic convention, extremely important for John Kerry for the reasons that you two alluded to earlier, and that is particularly you, Mike, and that is there is no definable John Kerry yet. And if John Kerry doesn't define Doug, himself... I, I disagree with the premise okay, of that. Go ahead. The, the, the idea there's no, define, there's no definable John Kerry, but the defined John Kerry leads George leads an incumbent president in, in the polls okay. early on, earlier in a campaign season. The campaign calendar has been moved earlier and earlier. That's a function of American politics. Many Americans throw up their hands and say, I can't believe we're talking about this campaign. But we are in the beginning of July before a November election, John Kerry is leading in national polls. So he may not be defined enough for Mike's taste, um, because Mike would like to take a big swing of a bat at him like a pinata, but he's defined enough for the majority of Americans who are currently saying that they prefer him to the incumbent president. Now, let me just throw this out. Or is he defined or is he simply not Bush? I, it seems to me that uh, m much of the Kerry vote is an anti-Bush vote, and those voters, in a sense, are waiting for Kerry to fill in the picture. And I think that uh, my, my premise of my previous question was that this convention might be able to do that. Mike? Well, I mean, I, I think that, that we have a 50-50 country anyway. I mean, we, the, the last election, I don't think we've really gotten anything le less polarized since the last election. So to the extent that there's the, the, the polls indicate that Kerry's doing well, I think that's a reflection of, of where, the, where the country is. Um, and it comes down to, to the center uh, uh, in some of the swing states. And, I, and that's just where I think where George Bush has a better chance of, of making his case and, and ultimately winning this election because John Kerry hasn't defined himself at this point. Uh, he hasn't filled in. Th these people are not going to be reactionary, uh, you know, Michael Moore-type uh, Democrats. Uh, these are going to be people in the center of the, of the, of the electorate that are going to need a reason to, to switch from a, from a president um, who has done a good job on the economy, who has done a good job on, on, uh, on fighting the war on terror, um, and has shown that he cares about uh, the, but their values and their interests. Okay, he just, he just described the Republican message. What, what, do you, what, do you what is John Kerry going to say to Americans to, in the general election campaign? What is the message? I think the message is going to be George Bush has been a failure, and I can do better, and okay. we can do better. Okay, how do, how do I and we do better? How do we do better? Yeah. We have a, we have a health care system that doesn't leave tens of mil millions of Americans behind. We, have a, we create an economy which doesn't leave um, many people in Rust Belt states kind of scratching their head and, and, and uh, wondering why they're working two jobs and can't keep up. We have a... a, a 
economy in a country which doesn't leave Americans around their kitchen table worried and wringing their hands, unable to figure out how they're going to deal with both their aging parents well, and their children. Well, this sounds like a coherent children. message, so, I mean, Mike. And, you know, and they're going to be sitting around the table wringing their hands about how they can afford to pay the taxes that uh, John Kerry is going to impose. I mean, clearly he's already, you know, opened with the uh, tax hikes. So you're, and you, so you're claiming that taxes are going to be part of this assault. Let me, let me, in a sense, break this up into two discussions, sort of the positive discussion and the negative discussion. You've just phrased the case uh, uh, against Kerry rather than for Bush. D just tick off the elements of the indictment against Kerry. Well, I mean, I, again, I, I think it, it comes down to um, he's, a, he's a Massachusetts liberal um, with a long record of voting for tax increases. Um, he is, he's in the, in the pocket of the, of the special interests, particularly the big unions. Um, you know, so uh, he's, not an, he, he's not a very decisive leader. Uh, clearly, you know, he, he makes these safe choices after months and months of, of hand-wringing. Um, I, I just don't think that, that people are going to... Listen, I respect the guy, his, his record at the war, you know, all that stuff. I mean, I have nothing but respect for that. Um, although, how he handled himself when he got back from the war is a whole other issue. Um, but um, I, I just don't think that he reflects uh, the mid... The, in the, he's not going to play in the Midwest and some of the other swing states, um, given his, his, his liberal record on, on issues like taxes and, and the economy. Give me the indictment of Bush. Kerry's indictment of Bush. Summarize it. A kind of a... a no domestic vision and, an inner, and, 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 a, and a vision of, a, of America and the world which has, has eroded our position and, and hurt our kind of leadership ability. Okay. You're advising Mr. Carey. What, what are you telling him to say? Now, you've got, you know, you're doing a personality change here. You are a Democrat. <laughs> you're advising Carey. What is your strategic advice? I think at some point the guy's got to talk about what he was gonna, what's he going to do in Iraq. And, and, and how is he going to deal with the war? I mean, how would you give me some suggestions for him? I mean, you know, Richard Nixon had a plan. Um, I don't know what the plan was. It was kind of a secret Neither plan. Neither did Nixon, but that's but it was, okay. But it was a plan, and it played. Okay. I have a secret plan. Do you think that might work? He's got to have some. He's got to have a. I'm not sure you can have a secret plan in, in this day and age, but you have to have some kind of vision, some kind of idea, and some kind of plan to, to deal with those issues. Yeah. Advise Bush. Now, if I was George Bush's advisor, I'd, I'd urge him to fire his advisor. <laughs> I'm sure he could I hire a guy like Michael. I'm sure it would be much more. Okay, yeah. Look, no, I, I actually think, all, all, all joking aside, I actually do think uh, Mike is an illustrative example. Is that there are, there are um, there's divisions within the Republican Party, and there is a Republican Party which um, uh, you know does speak to kind of industrial big states, Ohio, and, and others. Um, it's it's uh, Governor Taft and. Uh, Governor uh, Pataki and stuff. That is not the Republican Party that's uh, currently in power. Uh, Governor Pataki can hardly get his phone calls returned, and it's a very kind of ideological, extreme, conservative Republican Party, and I think that's going to hurt him in some of the states which um, um, could vote for a Democrat, could vote for a certain kind of Republican, um, but are not sure that George Bush is going to be that kind of that Republican. That sounds reasonable, particularly given that he mentioned your former employer, Governor Pataki, that Republicans here are different types of Republicans, and does that matter in this election? Would they defect, if you will, to Kerry? No, I mean, I think that, that President Bush has already um, uh, demonstrated leadership on issues like health care and issues like education, mm -hmm. No Child Left Behind, issues that John Kerry voted for. Um, so I think that he's, uh, to the extent that, it, that those are Democratic issues, I think that he's, he's taken out positions that will help him in the general election on those issues. What, what's the next, is, is, what is the next thing you'll, that you'll happens see, You'll see those issues campaign. more, and you'll see advertising more along those issues than than some of the ideological things that... Uh, okay, that's, that's where I wanted to go next. The nature of this war is both an air war and a ground war. Talk about the Republican air war. What is it going to be? I think it's steady leadership in, in troubled times, um, for one. I think uh, and, and that, that, that covers both the, the war on terror and, and the economy. I mean, remember, we, he inherited an economy that was, uh, was uh, in some rough shape. Um, I think you'll see some you know, uh, advertising along the lines of education, no child left behind, maybe some health care stuff, um, but uh, certainly education, the economy, and, and, the, uh, and the war on terror. Yeah, you know, Doug, they, they, um, they've already been up with $70 million of advertising. They're, to use a phrase of my grandmother's, they got bupkis from that. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, er, early which is on. goat droppings for those <laughs> not familiar with Yiddish. Right. The uh, the um, you know the, the Republicans were uh, you know salivating at their 
early what they believe was going to be a financial advantage. Um, that's turned out to be kind of not particularly the case. Democrats will be competitive. The Republican Party and the presidential campaign will spend more money, but not, a, um, not en enough more money to make a difference. Uh, Democrats have been kind of very competitive, kind of raising funds and stuff. I think the kind of the Republican Party early on hoped for a Democratic Party coming out of these primaries, which was, you know, at each other's neck. That's turned out not to be the case. They kind of were, um, uh, they did not want a guy with a, a Vietnam War record, a guy who kind of dragged his buddy out from the swamp, a guy who kind of has killed other people in the defense of his country. Um, and a guy, um, you know, they're at the point of arguing that one of his many medals is from an injury which was not serious enough to warrant that injury. Now, I I've become cautious enough in my own old age because I saw a great man and a fine American, Max Cleland, who gave his legs um, and much of his body for his country, dragged through this kind of thing. But John Kerry has one of the finest war records of anyone. And most people probably, uh, when they look at that, kind of say, you know what, this is a person who, despite kind of um, given all his beliefs, went and kind of uh, fought and could very well have died for his country. Okay. Mike, clearly in December, Republicans did not see the rough road that the president's gone down since then. Clearly, the, the game plan has been thrown off. What you described earlier, a Rose Garden strategy. I wouldn't necessarily describe it as a Rose Garden strategy, but when the other guy's playing rope-a-dope with himself every day and getting hammered, why get involved? But clearly, isn't Jeff right that the, the Republican game plan is off here a little bit? I, I don't think that's the case at all. I mean, okay. I, I think that um, from from every function that I've, I've seen uh, Bush people speak at from, Dece from December and earlier was the expectation that this was going to be a 50-50, 51-49 race. I mean, no one expected this to be a blowout uh, because of the, that's where the electorate is. It's a very competitive uh, situation. Um, and I, so I think that they're, they, they knew exactly what they were getting into. They predicted that the polls would come down. They predicted that Kerry would take some leads, and, they, and he may actually um, take another lead after the convention. We don't have much time. Quick. Nader, impact? Listen, I think that's a, it's a real issue. I mean, if, if John Kerry doesn't do the, uh, the, John, the, the Howard Dean rant to energize the base, um, he, he may turn off some of those people who will go to Nader. And if he does do it, he may turn off some of the center people who go to George Bush. Uh, m much reduced. People are looking at this election, and it's, a, it's, a, it's first a referendum on George Bush, which he's getting kind of failing marks for right now and the kind of at the time when people vote um, they're going to kind of know that it's a choice okay. between Bush and Kerry. November November 3rd what was the result? Give me percentages. I, I, I nationally probably um, again 51-49 but I think that George <coughs> Bush wins with, with easy, easier in the Electoral College this time around. Jeff? I, I would just uh, I think the results right I think just the uh, I think Kerry's going to win. Okay thank you. Very nice thank you.